Okay, so here we are, Empire of the Sun, uh, September through December, 1942. <sighs> Last time I expressed some misgivings about attacking Wake, but I got a couple air units, and they're within range of uh, Halsey's command up here in the Central Pacific. So they were able to land there, and now the U.S. has a very strong point right here again. Uh, kind of early in the war to be there. And we've got this strength here. Also able to go to Biak and put air units there. There's nothing the Japanese had that can stop this. All they have here is this uh, oil field, which is the resource hex. So New Guinea is mainly theirs. Things don't look too great up here. Uh, you know, historically the Japanese had pushed into Burma. Instead, what we see is the British pushing back into Siam with some Chinese uh, supplying reinforcements. They can't go out of Burma. They can't keep going, but uh, they are able to provide some additional defense there. Uh, used up the remainder of the IBM airplanes. <laughs> Yeah, overall, it's definitely not the historical situation. We've got Japan not doing as well as they did historically from the very beginning, really. And perhaps some of that's my fault, uh, not being able to really grasp the strategic implications of the actions that well. Uh, but we also see that the war in Europe is going more poorly due to card play. And it's kind of, uh, there's definitely an interesting factor here. These are decent sized decks of cards, and all the cards are in it. So what comes up when? That war in Europe doesn't matter if it comes late in the game. But early in the game, it's got a big effect. So uh, the fact that they got that might actually give them some breathing room on the East Front. But it's a card used. That could have been a card that would have been very, very valuable, say, in in the direct, uh, you know, events at hand right here. Anyway, uh, we'll be going into the offensive phase, and it looks like the initiative swung. The U.S. has seven cards. Japanese only have six. Uh, we had another success on the strategic, uh, on the on the torpedoings. A three this time. Three minus four plus one still comes out zero lost another shipping point. The Japanese are, you know, getting taxed there. Uh, that, that could be a real problem if they're not able to invade places. Of course, there may not be much left for them to do naval actions against. We'll see. All right. So the Americans opened things up by playing uh, Operation Vengeance killed Yamamoto. It just reduces one of the Japanese uh, headquarters, the combined uh, fleet. Its effectiveness is down to a two now. But the Japanese launched a massive attack on Guadalcanal, and here's where the luck comes in. It couldn't be, a, it wasn't going to be a surprise. You can't manage a surprise attack on these big events often. There was uh, air power, so there was no way with a seven uh, for the event card. And that's the thing the event cards tend to have a higher surprise value because they're bigger operations. So it's really unlikely to get surprise off. And the bigger the operation card, the more likely you're not going to get surprise. So it's the little things that you can pick something off on. But a little thing wasn't going to work. The idea here was to wipe out the American fleet. And they did a pretty good number on it. Uh, Attack-wise, they had some 71 points to 54 for the U.S. who was able to bring all their planes in. However, the U.S. rolled a 9. Hey, critical hit. Boom, two carriers down. Big, big loss, at least if I, oh, not there. <laughs> if I un understand what should be happening. Two, two major carriers, though, uh, went down there. And that's, uh, you know, that's a, a huge factor, I would say, if this game portrays things properly. I haven't yet figured out. See, yeah. So, Carriers may not be that important as a defensive tool. As an offensive tool, they're huge. But that just stripped out, and that's kind of the point, I guess. 
the Japanese don't really need them, but if they can get rid of U.S. Navy, then their Air Force can presumably protect the islands a little better. Well, in this case, they made a bad trade, and we're back to the U.S. Well, the U.S. launched an attack using Operation Cartwheel to try to pull the uh, Southern Command, uh, Southwest Pacific Command, in to knock the Japanese out of this oil field here on New Guinea. Massed a number of forces, had a shot at getting a uh, surprise. They needed uh, higher than a five. No air power for the Japanese, so it looked kind of likely. But our good buddies, the Japanese, Treat that. I'll pull it up here. Uh, our good buddies, the Japanese, managed to get uh, a reaction and pull their fleet back in to face the same fleet that it faced before. But their fleet was healthier because all they lost were uh, those two carriers. So they had. A couple of, well, one battleship, one carrier, and a couple of light ships against a damaged U.S. fleet. Wouldn't have been too bad, except uh, they played a submarine attack and managed to sink one of the carrier, the U.S. carrier there, which was uh, the Wasp. And then they took out the Northampton and Mississippi as well. And then the actual attack also hurt the U.S. troops and not the Japanese. Bad failure for the U.S. Uh, really bad. But <laughs> I'm beginning to see how bloody the reactions in this can be. And that was not a, oh, bad luck thing. I mean, they were gambling by making this. But again, it's the, ah, oh, if I can get away with this, it's great. And what am I going to do otherwise? What am I going to do with my cards? Um, am I just going to pick off air unit, you know, in, in these islands and try to move forward? Or can I do something major and put me right at the heart of, of the Japanese and maybe cut this entire section off, not necessarily from supply, but cut it off from being an effective strategic obstacle? Well, if it can't be cut off from supply, it probably needs to be fought. So, that may have been too much of a of a hopeful thought there. But anyhow, at least I'm making big mistakes on both sides, right? Okay. Both sides fired off a Burma operation. Now, the uh, British Burma operation was blocked by good old Gandhi, which ended up reducing uh, one of their units, one of the Indian units, as well as blocking the operation from even happening. The Japanese then responded against that weaker unit and the one it was stacked with, uh, firing off a powerful operation. No surprise. They took some heavy losses here, but they also dealt losses. Uh, they took out two of these Indian Corps and more air power than they lost, but at the cost of a couple of good Japanese uh, Corps, which definitely, I think they ended up on the losing end of this. Basically, they just they wiped out the uh, Indian forces, but the die rolls were high, and they took very heavy losses in doing so. All right, back to the uh, Allies. U.S. launched an, another major naval uh, invasion, this time with some Marines, against one of these spaces where I've got uh, just a Japanese plane. Well, no surprise. The Japanese brought their fleet, not their fleet, but their air fleet forward, along with uh, a carrier, maybe a I don't think they had a cruiser. And they did a lot of damage, including off of a submarine attack, taking another carrier out. So now the U.S. fleet in Hawaii eh, is down to just the North Carolina in damaged shape. Uh, the casualty numbers are just, in terms of fleets, are just growing tremendously. I'm not sure that this is going that well for the Allies, given 
the amount of damage they've taken on their attacks up here and then over here. Uh, there was some fiddling with cards. This thing fired off to get create the uh, inter-service rivalry and then the US played a card which allowed them to fish out of the deck something they're gonna launch an attack in Burma with uh, very shortly but the Japanese get the next move. The way the cards have been playing out the Japanese have and I don't know how this happened but except for redraws and stuff they have four cards left and the US only has two or the Allies only have two which I didn't think that would happen but you know cards like this this isn't a reaction, but it allows you to redraw, so it's kind of a a null action, you know? I mean, you get an effect, but you also don't lose uh, any of your initiative. Uh, neither side has any passes left. I see my little thing with the flags wasn't necessary. There's markers for that. I had noticed them before, but then forgot about them. All right, well, let's see what the, uh, let's see what the Japanese can do. So here we are, uh, this is pretty much the end of the September-December turn. We're going into 1943. Now, I looked at uh, the supply situation. The only thing that's really troubling is this guy right here. Oh, the Japanese uh, managed to push actually into Burma now. Uh, at not terrible expense. They lost a, a core, though but did about equivalent. They can't afford attrition, however, I don't think. Um, but this guy, I think, is out of supply because he's within a zone, uh, a zone of influence. He has no way to cancel it out. And uh, he would be reduced, except he already is. He's within range of a headquarters, so he's not destroyed. He, they're able to slip some supplies into him, so he gets to stay there which isn't too terrible, I suppose. The, you'll notice I started moving some of the Australians into place to try to make a land assault because doing this through naval and air is just too costly. Here's the problem. One, the U.S. is out of carriers. Uh-oh. Two... Trying to see how many hexes the Allies took. Well, my count is one. That's it. They had to take five this turn. And every turn from here on in. If they don't, they lose another one. These have to be uh, some sort of named location, a port or an airfield. Which actually means this sucker wouldn't even count. They're not progressing. Uh, now, if they had taken this, they would get the whole Marshall Islands, which would give them several locations, I guess. But, as it stands, they fall another one. And U.S. Pro political will is dissolving. Uh, things do not look good for them at all. Alright, I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, you'll see both sides saved a card at this point. The U.S. is still holding their card. It's uh, their War in Europe card. They didn't want to play it this turn because it's only worth one mark, whereas they can get two marks next turn and they'll do it then. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's beginning to look pretty bleak for them, and they've taken some pretty heavy losses trying to fight against the Navy. I don't know if I'm just so bad on offense in this game. Uh, that's quite possible. I, it, it's very tricky though. It's very, uh, it's very difficult for me to understand exactly how best to use my forces. Alright, well, we'll see how it continues.